for um, apologies for the uh, slightly late delay. Uh, we're, we're in a high-tech uh, event this evening. Uh, I'm uh, Moira McConnell. I'm a faculty member at Dalhousie Law School and a member of the Marine Environmental Law Institute, also based at the law school. And it's uh, really my privilege to be able to welcome you here uh, to Dalhousie Law School for our um, very interesting uh, talk we're going to have this evening. Um, I also want to extend, but they might not hear me yet, because we're being webcast. So we're joined by colleagues at Acadia and at Cape Breton University. And we're working on a little glitch with sound, but they are, uh, in fact, able to see us, if not uh, hear me at the moment. Um, so uh, what uh, uh, my role this evening is the moderator for the evening. Uh, won't take a long time making speeches. I just wanted to make a brief administrative announcement and give you uh, some information for the evening in the order of events uh, uh, for tonight. Um, I first just want to mention to you that there's a uh, really pertinent for this evening's uh, talk. There's also another talk next Tuesday night, um, and I'll pass be passing around posters around it called Climate Change and Our Energy Choices, and it's a political debate involving candidates from all uh, four parties that are running in the Nova Scotia election, and they will be debating many of the things we'll hear about tonight, I'm sure. Uh, the moderator will be Silver Donald uh, Cameron at 7 p.m. Tuesday, May the 26th, uh, at the uh, Theatre A Tupper Medical Building, uh, Dalhousie Campus. So I'll just pass this around to you. Now, other administrative information, um, usual reminders, if you have a cell phone, I'd ask you to put it on silence, vibrate, turn it off uh, for this evening. Um, also, uh, for those who are, haven't visited us at the law school before, the ladies washroom is out the door and on that side, and the men's is out the door and on that side of the hall. Um, what we'll be doing this evening is, I will uh, introduce very briefly uh, Linda uh, Schertzinger, who has uh, been coordinating and organizing uh, this, uh, this uh, entire uh, event. Um, she's chair of the United Church Maritime Conference Environment Working Group. Uh, so she'll be um, introducing uh, more about the evening, telling you a little bit about some of our sponsors. We're going to hear from one of the key sponsoring organizations. And, uh, and then Linda will introduce our guest speaker for this evening, and then you'll have me back for question period. We anticipate the talk this evening will be sort of somewhere between 35, 45 minutes, and then we're going to open up for discussion and, uh, and uh, questions. Uh, I'd also, um, before I turn, it over, turn things over to Linda, I would like to extend a special thanks to uh, Crest Halifax, uh, who are the gentlemen there who are doing our webcast for us this evening. So thank you very much also for, for that work on our behalf and hopefully we'll have sound for too long. Now, is this about right for everyone here sound-wise? Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's okay in the back of the room? <coughs> Great. Okay, good. Linda, if you could. Sit down a little lower. <laughs> thank you very much. I've had a wonderful day today. Uh, full of learning a lot about energy and renewable energy. And I want to first introduce and thank some of the key sponsors who have made it possible for us to have a day uh, with uh, Dr. Christine Werlin and to have many opportunities during this day and to have this event this evening. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, Graham Saul, who is the Executive Director of Climate Action Network Canada. And uh, Graham, where are you? <laughs> Graham is in the back. Okay. And uh, in case you are not familiar with this organization, it is a coordinating body that brings together 100 different organizations across the country to act together to protect the climate from dangerous human interference. 
and uh, Graham Saul and that office are located in Ottawa. Uh, but as you can see, uh, they work all over the country. The other main sponsor for our opportunity is Arne uh, Jungjohan, and uh, Arne is the program director for environment and global dialogue regarding climate and energy issues. And he is with the Heinrich Ball Foundation. It is a German foundation, but he is based in Washington, D.C. And uh, perhaps you have a little interest in finding out a bit more about that, and I believe Arnie would be happy to share a few words about it. Arnie? Introduction. And, uh, good evening, everyone. Arne Jungjan is my name with the Heinrich Böll Foundation. Uh, I'm happy to see so many people here tonight. I even see some familiar ones from, from earlier on this day, so this is very encouraging. Um, I assume that not all of you know about the Heinrich Böll Foundation. Heinrich Böll was a writer. Uh, he was part of the Green Movement in the late 70s in Germany. And the foundation is actually a, a think tank of the German Green Party. It's affiliated with the German Green Party. And the family agreed to, to give the name to the foundation of Heinrich Böll for, for the Green Party Foundation. And we are headquartered in, in Berlin, in Germany, but we have offices around the world, 30 offices around the world, one in Washington, D.C., uh, covering the United States, but also Canada. And we engage in a lot of green issues. We help promote democracy. We, we help uh, promote civil rights, gender is one of the big issues. And uh, in the core of, of the issues is these days climate change and energy policy. Um, we, do, uh, we do a lot of visitor programs, we host events, we, uh, like, like this one for example, we support or we, we publish new reports. And on this one, on this issue, we, we recently have, have a new report on, on feed and tariffs in the United States because it attracts lots of attention on the state level in the United States. Currently, around about a dozen United States, a dozen states within the United States are considering introducing a legislation that you will hear from Christine about. Um, and when I was making my way here to Canada, I thought, you know, how can you tell a little story of how does this issue connect with Canada? The Lonely Planet tells there was a big storm in 2003 um, that did a lot of damage, and I think particularly this region seems to be very um, uh, highly impacted of, of climate change in the future. Um, uh, or just this week, if you, if you think about the American debate where, where I'm coming from, there's a big debate on the waxman markey climate bill. They are about to introduce a cap and trade system, renewable energies. So I think this is a very, a very timely matter uh, and it's crucial for this region. Um, and I, I was thinking about how to connect, connect the story to, to Germany. But I, I don't really have to do the job myself because I found over here at this information booth this sheet about renewable energies and the feed-in tariff in particular. And uh, it tells a very nice story about wind and the size of the country. And I just want to I want to read this uh, off the publication. It says here, in comparison between Germany and Canada, it says, with less than 5% of the land mass of Canada at its disposal, Germany has more than 12 times as much wind power installed. So, uh, that, that shows you a little bit here on the map, little green dot, Germany, <laughs> big Canada, but then it's the opposite around uh, with wind. So, what that tells you is actually, um, countries, other countries don't have really a lot of resources in terms of, of wind, of, of solar energy, of biomass, and it's still possible to, to really go a long way on renewable energies if you have the political will, if you decide to, to do that. And Christine will talk about... Uh, um, a design, a policy design that seems to be most effective to go that way, and I'm, I'm very happy that we had the chance to bring her over, and I'm very curious to, to hear the, the new presentation this evening. But before I hand it over to you, I want to extend my thanks to, to Graham in the back once again for putting together a great program, not only here in Halifax, but, but further on in Fredericton and St. John's, and also to, to Linda, who made this all possible here, here in this area. So thank you very much, and you all have a good evening. <laughs> 